7.1 problems. So here we have a voltaic cell and anode is where the oxidation occurs and cathode is where the reduction occurs. I can only get myself to remember these because oxidation and anode both start with a vowel and cathode and reduction both start with a consonant. Oxidation is the loss of electrons. Reduction is the receiving or gaining of electrons. Reduction is receiving. They totally think you know this, what oxidation is and so forth. You need to know that, write it down. Anode is where the oxidation happens. Cathode is where the reduction happens. So there's gonna be an exchange of electrons. Well, which way are the electrons gonna go? So we have a solid in both cases, and then we have the uh, cation version of both. What nature wants is a positive voltage potential, or notice that this is E naught or E standard. So we're going to go talk about the standard potential, the standard cell potential. That's a phrase you need to know. They don't ask for E standard. They ask for the standard cell potential, and this is what they mean. So for the homework, go get your big sheet of standard reduction potentials, or in the test, they would give you a table, or they would just write it into the problem or something. So I have solid, solid, and they can go to the cation or from the cation. And here's a big point. One of these has got to be oxidizing. They can't both be receiving electrons. If the electrons are gonna flow through the wire, then something's gotta be giving them, something's gotta be oxidizing. So we're gonna go find these reactions on the standard cell potential table. And we're gonna find it with cobalt and cobalt plus two and silver and silver plus one but one of them has to turn around and be oxidizing. And nature wants to have a positive voltage potential. So since this one turns out to be a negative and that one turns out to be a positive in the reduction form, I'm gonna turn around this one because then when I turn this reaction around to be this, the oxidizing version, I get to change the sign on this. And that's now a positive. Now I have a positive and a positive and they add up to this overall standard cell potential. And do not forget to put capital V on there, volts. Remember, they want units on numbers on the real test, and they are going to charge the whole point for the problem if you don't put a unit on the number. So what's the overall reaction? Well, I've got this is my reduction reaction now, and this is my oxidizing reaction, but you can't give two electrons and only receive one. So we're gonna multiply this whole reaction by two. And another thing to write down is the electrons need to cancel out. So now I have two electrons coming out on the right, two electrons going in on the left and they cancel out. That's why they don't appear in the overall reaction. And remember, I've multiplied this by two, this by two. So when I shove the two half reactions together, I get this as my overall reaction or note to self, net ionic reaction. This is the net ionic reaction. And I've seen the real test problems ask for that and not the overall reaction. They ask for the net ionic reaction. So another term here is a galvanic cell. There was a Mr. Galvani, which I believe I mentioned before. So here's a way to make a, an affordable, a pretty cheap, powerful, battery, a voltaic or galvanic cell, essentially. Well, a, technically a battery is a collection of cells. That's what battery means, a collection of. Anyway, what we'd use is lead, which is pretty cheap, and sulfuric acid. Now, one of the H's has already come off because remember, sulfuric acid is a strong acid and one of the H's is definitely gonna come off just in water. So that's where the other one has gone before you say that's not sulfuric acid. Well, it, this is what remains after the first H comes off. And if we combine these, we get to cancel out the two electrons on each side and one H plus cancels out one H plus and gives me two H pluses. And because the electrons already cancel out, I don't need to multiply the half reactions by anything and they just become pretty much just smashed together. I get to take the E standard. Remember, this is the oxidation version. So on many tables, you would find this reaction written backward where it's receiving two electrons. But we know that we want an overall voltage potential that's positive or this, this battery won't work. Plus we have to flip something. 
So let's take this one because the voltage potential for reduction was negative. Flip the reaction backward, put a positive on it then, and then our adding up of this gives a positive voltage overall. On this problem, they get pretty tricky and they kind of hide information in this paragraph. And it almost looks like they're just not really telling us anything, but it's actually quite a lot. It's a big clue. If you put silver metal in aqueous thallium fluoride, no reaction occurs. So what they're saying is if you have silver metal with thallium plus one, I guess, cation, nothing happens. Electrons don't like to flow from solid silver to thallium cation to make this. So that must have a negative voltage, huh? So then, by all logic, the opposite must be what nature wants to do. You need to put solid thallium in aqueous silver cation. So that must be the one that's spontaneous that has a positive voltage, which tells us in our cell here, our voltaic cell, the electrons want to go from solid thallium, which is why we know the electrons are flowing left to right once we close the little switch, right? That means that thallium is losing electrons, which means this is the oxidizing, which means it's the anode, which means this is receiving electrons, which means it's reducing, which means it's the cathode. So write the half reaction that occurs in the cell, the reduction. We just said this is receiving, which means that the silver plus cations are being drawn to the negatively charged stick here, and they make their way th through the water, and they hit it, and they pick up an electron, and they stick to it, and they really stick to it, and the mass of this is going up, and boy, do they think you know that. They say in some way, uh, well, the mass is growing, the mass is uh, falling, the mass is reducing, something like that, because at the site of the cathode of the reduction, the the mass will go up. These ions will stick there as solid atoms and the mass of this will go up. On the other hand, this is losing electrons. And so there are thallium atoms giving up apparently one electron each and then letting go. And they go in to the solution and they are no longer stuck to the electrode. And so this is getting smaller and smaller. And if you run this for a while, you can actually see this get pits in it. And eventually you can see if it's a thin strip, you can see holes in it. Whereas this is getting bumpier and bumpier in a positive way as these deposit onto there. Then what happens is we, we have to have a salt bridge or this doesn't work at all. So I'm just going to jump into that. So the atoms are letting go and becoming aqueous. So the character of this solution is becoming more and more positive. These cations are sticking to the electrode, so the character of this solution is becoming more and more negative. And if you let this go for very long at all, what's going to happen, just to get kind of deep about this, is this whole solution is going to get so negative that the cation silvers here have no real reason to go and be attracted and move over to the negatively charged electrode. Why don't they just hang out with their attractive F minus friends? There are so many of them. So they won't migrate over and they won't pick up electrons. Over here, the thallium cations are building up, building up, building up. And if you don't do something about it, the solution will become so positive that there's a repulsion for the new cations coming off. And in both ways, you've inhibited the reaction. So what you do is you put a source of cations and anions, and the anions will be drawn to the increasing positive character of this half, and the cations will be drawn to the increasing negative character of this half, and that will put the charges back to neutral. Now, it doesn't have to be plus one and minus one and so forth, and in fact, I've seen them ask questions where it's not, and maybe this is a plus two, in which case, of course, you need 
two F minuses in there for every one plus two. They didn't really ask that, but I'm just saying it doesn't have to match in numbers, but it will flow so that the charges go back to neutral. And eventually, of course, you can run out of ions in the salt bridge and then this, this stops. And these are in our sort of laptop. And these are cotton balls to uh, prevent this from just draining out immediately or something. So if we take our oxidation reaction and our reduction reaction, which we already wrote here, and combine them, we get this for our overall reaction. Of course, the electrons are going to cancel out, aren't they? The anode is the place where oxidation is happening. That's the source of the electrons. That's where the mass is going down. The flow will go from the anode to the cathode, so they are going left to right. So here they get a little tricky, and instead of asking the E standard cell potential, they're asking the reduction potential for the thallium half reaction. And this is tricky a couple of ways. Very much notice it's the reduction potential. So we know that the overall cell potential is the addition of the reduction and the oxidation. Now they handed us the reduction potential of the silver half of this up top. Go look. And we know that the reduction happening plus the oxidation happening must equal the total voltage. And they told us that also in the introductory paragraph. So then we, if we call this X, we can subtract over and we get the value for X. But the extra, extra trick is we just solved for the oxidation version of the thallium half reaction because that's what's happening in our cell is oxidizing, right? It's oxidized. But they asked for the reduction potential so the sign is opposite for the one we just solved for. On F, we want the largest voltage, and we're going to use the half reactions at the top. Go look, and they give us the reduction potentials. Obviously, one of these has to turn around and be oxidized. And for it to happen in real life, for it to be spontaneous, for it to be a favored reaction by nature in real life, the total voltage, when we add them up, has to be positive. So we have to turn around something, right? Well, let's turn around the negative one, the nickel one, and make that be positive. And then we'll choose the greatest positive as our reduction half, and then we get this plus that, and that's our greatest possible positive out of this set. On G, if we take platinum metal and want it to react with aqueous silver cation, then what we're saying is we have these two half reactions where platinum is going from a solid to, that would be a positive two, with the two electrons coming out. And I know that because I looked up top. And I need this one then to be the oxidation because I don't have cation, I have solid, according to G here. I do have silver cation. And so then I need the cation to go to solid. So the value of this, remember I have to reverse the sign because now this is an oxidation reaction, is negative this, and I get to keep the positive 0.8, but when I add them up, I get a negative overall voltage, which means that this is not a favored reaction. It is not spontaneous. Nature doesn't want this to happen, and nothing will happen when you do this in real life.